بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد So the question that was asked is How did you learn Arabic? What worked for you? Or what were your struggles? Um, this is generally the question In answer to the question um, Learning Arabic varies from person to person just like learning different skills so sometimes a person who speaks a language that has many words linked to the arabic language perhaps it's easier for him to progress a faster rate than someone who is coming from a background pro of, of a language where there's no words so moving from Swahili to uh, Arabic, I think I had an advantage, or alhamd, because a lot of words in the Swahili language are uh, they, there's a lot of similarities in some of the in a lot of the words. That's one thing. The other thing also is the fact that alhamd, there was a lot of emphasis given to memorizing the Quran since young age. It's something that is very um, it's given a lot of focus in Kenya from a young age and I thank my teachers who used to beat me Jazakumullah khairan in order to memorize the Quran I think that was thinking about it now I, I appreciate their effort and thank them for the encouragement even though at the time I wasn't too happy with that but you tend to realize that some lessons you learn uh, through difficulties Allah, alhamdulillah if, uh, I wish I had someone that can beat me so I can memorize uh, hadith and 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 other things uh, and someone pushing me to memorize the fear factor definitely helped when it, when it came to memorizing and being serious when it comes to memorizing the Quran so that helped a lot and a lot of people you tend to find that memorizing the Quran, memorizing the Quran, you learn a lot of skills. From the skills that you learn from memorizing the Quran, which helps you in other fields and other sciences, is discipline. You learn discipline because in order for a person to memorize the Quran, day in, day out, you have to read either memorizing or reviewing. Reviewing is something that's going to be constant until you die. But you have to memorize, 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 and then continue memorizing, continue memorizing, and you have to be consistent in this manner, whether you're memorizing half a page, one page. So this discipline that you pick up is an important skill for you to excel in any subject, in any science. This is uh, one thing. Likewise, what makes you want to learn the Arabic language is the fact that you're memorizing the Quran and you don't understand what it means. You don't, you're memorizing the Quran and you don't understand what it means. So this also pushes you to want to learn the Arabic language. You're memorizing the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't know what it means. That's another thing. The other thing also is when you do find out what an ayah means, through attending a muhadara or conference or reading a tafsir or hearing the the way this affects you your iman knowing that you've been memorizing this quran reading and you never knew what it means but now that you know what it means that also acts as a stimulus and an encouragement for you to further your understanding of the arabic language so that you can gain uh, and a great understanding of other ayat and increase your iman by reading and understanding the other ayat that's another thing also the fact that when you're told that the Quran is a mu'jizah it's a miracle that was given to the Prophet Sallallahu every Prophet was given a miracle and the miracle given to our Prophet from those miracles is the Quran if you don't know Arabic you're thinking to yourself how is it a miracle you understand Obviously, you know it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to witness this miracle and understand and appreciate it, you need to understand the Arabic language. That's another thing. The other thing also is we're told that the source of all knowledge and the 
greatest evidence for any masail is al quran in fiqh in any science if uh, ayah from the quran is quoted this is a sufficient evidence so this is the source of knowledge and this source of knowledge is in the is in the arabic language so you can't really be quoting uh, ayat if you don't understand the context you don't understand the meaning you don't understand its application so that's another thing that encourages people well it encouraged me anyway to memorize the quran so these two things they go hand to hand memorizing the quran and learning the arabic language is something that goes hand to hand both of them a uh, strengthen the other so if you memorize the quran and you understand arabic for example it's going to help you with your memorization you know is it ta'lamun ya'lamun you understand the dhama'ir and how is it mu'annath mudhakkar so you don't make silly mistakes like inna alladhina kafaru min ahli kitab mushrikina fi nar jannah khalidina fiha ulaika hum is it khayrul bariya sharul bariya a person who understands arabic that is not even a question for them but someone who doesn't understand arabic they've been thinking is it khayrul bariya is it sharul bariya next the ayah is talking about kuffar so how can it be khayrul bariya it must be sharul bariya they are the worst of the creation they are the worst of the creation so things like this is something that encourages a person to memorize the Quran, encourages a person to learn the Quran, and the skills go hand in hand. One of the things that I struggled with, and I, I feel like this is a struggle for most people who are learning the Arabic language, is that when it comes to application, what you've learned, the theory and stuff, and you go to an Arab country and you're thinking, mashallah, alhamdulillah, I can practice what I've learned, and you do practice what you've learned and you're pronouncing the letters correctly, and that's another thing also, pronunciation of the letters. Yeah, this being able to pronounce the letters correctly, this is very, very important. Giving this a lot of attention. And this is something that you pick up when you're learning the Quran and reading with Tajweed. That's another thing that helps you with the, and it helped me with the learning the Arabic language, being able to pronounce the letters correctly and knowing uh, where the, the letters articulation points are and stuff. Because writing, if you're going to be someone dictating something and you need to write what they're saying, you're going to base it off their pronunciation. And if you're even yourself, if you hear a word and then you you've understood it wrong or you're mispronouncing it, you're going to misspell it as well. Spelling is uh, stems off from pronunciation. So if the pronunciation is wrong, the spelling is going to be wrong and vice versa. So let's get back to the challenges. The challenge was the fact that when you speak Arabic in a Muslim country or predominant Arab community, you tend to find that there's a big difference between what you learn in theory and the application of Arabic in our era, in our time. The, the way a lot of Arabs speak is not this, the way we are taught the Fusha that we are taught in lessons you know so this poses a challenge sometimes when you do speak with fusha it can uh, they can take the mic out of you sometimes people take the mic out of you look at this guy yeah you, you feel like you you don't fit in because everyone else is speaking with a lahja and a dialect that's different to using different words so that's like i'm thinking what am i doing am i meant to be learning this or do i need to learn what they're saying the way they're speaking because you you stand out and it's like someone who speaks posh english coming to the ghettos and speaking the way they're speaking with these guys who are speaking slang and it's, it's like you think you're above us and people tend to feel this way towards you knowing how to speak like uh, the dialect of the people kind of helps sometimes because it makes you fit in and you don't get any bumped when you're trading buying and selling if someone knows this guy's is a stranger is not from these ends they can violate you sometimes so that's that's one of the challenges um one of the things that helps with learning arabic is being in an arab environment moving to an arab country going to yemen helped a lot alhamdulillah and i think the yemenis their dialect is closer to fusha so that was a Yani, something that helped a lot. I don't think I would have picked up as much Arabic if I was around the Misri's, for example. That dialect, subhanAllah, is so 
how any difficult to understand you understand if you're if you're if you're learning fusha and you sit next to the yemenis you can kind of work out and understand what they're saying a lot of their words are in fusha it might be the way they're pronouncing it and stretching this this and that but it's it's a fussy so this these these are some of the uh challenges and i, I wanted to record this a long time ago but i didn't get the chance to I've done it now, alhamdulillah. Apologies for the background noises. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shadu Allah, and astaghfiruka, tubarik.